kind of in light of of uh, of this of this tragedy, I can't imagine what Jean is carrying. Can you? Um, you know, she's done uh, with Red just incredible job of taking care of Karen um, all those years. Um, you know, when a child grows up, you hope they leave the house. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's the plan. Um, and you know, she's uh, had to care for Karen for fifty some plus years, and. And then to have um, you know Judy be the one that was going to care for her, I just can't imagine how her head is spinning right now. Uh, and I do know that I, I just look around and I just see a lot of people carrying a lot of different things. Um, you know what? Um, sometimes we look at the troubles that we have and we say, "Why God? Like why? Why do we have all of these things going on?" Instead of uh, perhaps in the middle of that, that's the time when God's the closest and God's the most meaningful and the most powerful uh, in our lives. So I want to tell you this um, little story. This week, uh, you know, our, our life has been a little busy. Um, we've uh, got a wedding coming up next Saturday. Um, by the way, I, I need to apologize to my in-laws over this because I just put my tux on and got married. I didn't, I didn't have a worry in the world when I got married. Um, <laughs> I literally, I, I told Cheryl this week, I could think of a thousand things, a hundred things that, that worried me more than getting married. You know, I, I just was getting married. And, and I need to apologize to them for all the work that they did to, you know, give away their daughter to me. That was, uh, that was quite a thing. So uh, on top of that, you know, this whole move thing, just popping in and buying a house and getting a loan and all of that stuff is just kind of overwhelming. By the way... Um, my heart even goes out to your next pastor because today at some other church they know that a change has taken place but the church doesn't you know I was in that position a couple weeks ago and you know you, you gotta think of that that there's a person who's whose head is probably spinning right now as well that's uh, that you're gonna love and you're gonna care for and so we wanna we wanna pray for that all of that's going well um, uh, even this week, so we're getting ready for a wedding, and um, so there's somebody else coming in to take our house, and they're going to want to look at it. <laughs> Think about that for a little bit. Um, you're planning a wedding, and you got all that wedding stuff in your house, and you're like, okay, we'll take care of this later. We'll take care of this later. We'll take care of this later. And, like, you're not just having guests come over. You're having somebody come over to look at every single room and closet it you own. And we're like, okay, okay, we'll, we'll add that in. And it's just kind of overwhelming to begin to think about, think, think about all of that stuff. That's, and did I tell you I'm dancing with my daughter? You know, I got... <laughs> um, there's just a lot of things. So this week, um, Isaac's probably taking a brunt of everything. He has to go and house shop and he has to go and wedding shop and do all this kind of stuff and and there was a morning when I came home and he was really wanting me to play this game with a balloon where you shoot the balloon like a basketball and try to get it to land inside the lamp um, and so we were playing this by the way don't ever play that game because what we were playing was okay whoever makes it in first wins Every time that balloon hit any part of the lamp, it bounced all the way over. And it was like impossible. We were shooting it and shooting it and shooting it and shooting it. And uh, we played probably, you know, it was probably six, seven minutes. It wasn't a long time. But as soon as I'm heading out the door, I said, I give up. I've just, I got to go to work, buddy. And he runs to the door and, and he says, I made it. <laughs> I made it. And I'm like, you cheated. <laughs> And Cheryl said, kind of, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I just thought as I got in the car, I unlocked the heart of my little boy in five minutes. I just unlocked his heart. That it didn't take forever. I remember looking at my clock and it was 8.20 in the morning and I thought, I could have been at work five minutes ago, but I unlocked the heart of my kid in five minutes. What was it that he needed? Uh, you just need a little attention. Um, he needed a little love. He needed a little focus. And 
is he different than anybody else? The, you know, human relationships need focus. They need attention. They need time. Um, he needed to know that no matter if mom, mom didn't want us playing balloon basketball in the living room, but we were going to do it, and we we're going to have fun doing it, and we we're going to, you know, he, he knew it was about him at that moment. Can I share some scriptures with you? Because what would it be like if we attempted to unlock the heart of God? Now, it's good. I, I, want, I think it's important, and I think I even learned from that, that every single one of your family members, you got to do something to unlock their heart regularly. It's very big. Your, your friends, you want to unlock their heart. You know, the opposite of unlocking somebody's heart would be locking it or hardening it. And there are things that we do in life, very commonly do in life, that harden the hearts of those around us. Um, but what would it be like if we began to soften or unlock the hearts of those around us? Uh, this scripture from Hebrews chapter 6, there's just four scriptures here today. You'll get the point of where we're at. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This is the faith chapter in the Bible. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now think of that. Um, without faith, you can do everything else in the world to unlock the heart of God. But without faith, it's impossible to do it. This pleasing, to bring pleasure to somebody. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He, he desires this. And what we do, when we show faith in Him, when we show that we trust Him, that unlocks the heart of God. When we cast our cares upon Him, when we show our burdens to Him, that unlocks the heart of God. It, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? I'm glad he puts the definition in there. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Uh, there's, it, it's very important for us to understand that, that God wants our faith in him. He wants us to trust him. And how do you show that you trust God except during the moments in life that, it, that it's hard to trust God, except in the moments when it's difficult. Those are exactly the moments. When, when those show up in our lives, we can unlock the heart of God by showing Him that, hey, you got this. I know you've got this. I trust you with it. I hand it over to you. You've got it. Now help me know what to do next. When we begin to do that, you know what God does? He's like, oh, Wow, that brings so much pleasure to him. So much pleasure. Why? Because it shows us that we believe that he exists. And that he, um, he comes on behalf, he comes strongly on behalf of those who seek him, of those who turn their attention towards him. Here's a couple other scriptures that go along with this. So um, this faith... Um, we got to believe that he exists, and there's a seeking that goes along with it. Um, also in Psalm chapter 14, verse 2. Psalm chapter 14, verse 2. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Now the interesting thing about this passage is that it almost appears that God is looking down and he's seeking something. And what he's seeking is somebody who's looking up, seeking him. Isn't that beautiful? There's, there's the picture of focus. There's a picture of two being focused on each other. God is looking down from heaven, and he's looking all around, looking for um, somebody who's looking up, somebody who's seeking him. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Um, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 this passage uh, verse comes at the very end of a passage that has to do with worry. Saying, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It says instead, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. What's God want? Uh, in the midst of worry, he wants our eyes on him. He wants our attention to be upon him. 
And when, when things are going difficult, when things are tough, when we don't know how it's going to happen, it's like he wants us to have our eyes upon him. Like, God, I'm seeking you, and I'm going to be about doing the business of your kingdom. And do you know what he says? Okay, hey, I got the rest. I'll take care of the rest. And then the last one is Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Uh, again, this is right after this passage. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And um, you might think that the thing that we're asking for is, is something, do you, know, do you know what we really need to be asking for? Do you know what we really need to be seeking? Him. God, I want more of you. I need more of you. I'm focused upon more of you. In every one of these passages, there's one word that's the center of it. Do you know what the word is? Seeking. He wants us to seek him. He wants our attention to be upon him. Uh, so, uh, you know, if I played this game with you, uh, do it this afternoon and you'll see. How many of you saw any gray minivans on the way here? Um, not too many people are raising your hand. Why? Because you weren't looking for gray minivans, were you? On the way home, look for gray minivans. Please, will you do that? Will you look for gray minivan? And uh, for fun, just like text me. Tell me how many gray minivans you saw, you know? Uh, you know that'll blow up my phone, you know? <laughs> don't, please don't do that. I, I got enough worries today. I don't need to have all these numbers going through my mind. But do you know what happens when you're going to look for gray minivans? Do you, what are you going to see? You're going to see gray minivans, and you're going to see them everywhere, everywhere. Because they are everywhere. You didn't see them because you weren't looking for them. That is the kind of seeking that, that we're talking about. It's like sometimes we don't see what God is up to because we're not looking for him. We're not looking for what he's doing. We're not focused upon him. Uh, has anybody ever found any shark teeth on the beach? Um, down around Venice, Florida, there's these, um, there's these beaches that somehow, I don't know, I don't know all, the, all the things, but there are shark's teeth that come up onto the beach. And so um, they were telling us about them, and like I walked up and down the beach, and I didn't see any. And so I went up to one of the people, and, and I said, now, how do you find these? And the person said, well, you don't look for white, you look for black. You look for something black that's shiny, and when you look for, you just pick up the things that are black and shiny. Now think about this, you're out on the beach. What is on the beach? Sand. Um, if, you know, there's sand everywhere on the beach. If you're focused on sand, you won't find, you, you won't find shark's teeth. What else is on the beach, especially around this Venice area? Shells everywhere, like the shells pile up in just these huge stacks of so that, that people take strainers and they just, they just pick them up and shake it and, you know, there's just shells just absolutely everywhere. So if you're looking for sand, you're not going to find them. If you're looking for shells, you're not going to find them. What do you got to look for? You got to look for these shiny black things. And so I just began, and, and what they did was they handed me one because I couldn't find one unless I already saw one. Um, so they handed me one and gave me one, you know, and then just begin to look for them, and just within a few minutes, you could just start finding them as you, as you begin to walk through the beach. What did I have to do to find a shark's tooth? I had to um, focus in, or more, more importantly, had to focus out a lot of other things. Um, I had to focus out other people that were on the beach. I had to focus out the sand. I had to focus out the shells, and I had to focus right on just little one, one little spot. That's how you seek something. That's how you search for something. Anybody do these little word search puzzles? Um, and when you're looking for a word in a word search puzzle, this is what helped me. Um, you don't look for a big word. You just look like you pick out the word that you're, and then you pick out a most like rare letter that would be in that word, and then just go through and pick out one letter. And like if, you're, if you've got a, a word with a Q in it, boy, you're going to find it pretty fast, aren't you? You just look for a Q. There's a focused in on one little thing. Now here's where we get trouble with life. Um, if you would be in my brain this week, I'm telling you, it would be scary. Um, in fact, uh, I wanted to tell Rod, like, 
please just turn the recording off because these people know me. Like, I don't want anybody watching this and me reveal what's in my brain right now. And uh, you literally would check me into Oakland. Um, just begin to think about everything that's... Uh, um, so I woke up two nights ago and I turned to Cheryl and I go, I spent... Like, I spent the night building a deck on a house that I don't think we'll ever own. <laughs> and I'm serious. I spent hours, and I, like, I probably won't even make an offer on this house. And, and I'm building a deck and designing it, and I, like, I, and I can't shut it off. It's just going. Just going constantly. And I'm like, no, I've got these, and this, I've got all of this stuff. And so I was going to unpack my bag and just say, um, you know, here is you guys. Like, I got all of you on my mind. And right now, like, like Gene Green is big. Like, there'd be, I'd just be pulling out stuff out of that, like big rocks that have to do with, with Gene Green right now. You know, and they begin to think of the wedding, and like, there are a thousand things in my backpack from that uh, that are going on. And, you know, buying a house and loans and all of these things and moving and somebody coming in and look at the house and just everything is just kind of overwhelming. And then you go through each individual person in my family and you just begin to, it's just absolutely like I'm going bonkers just thinking about it. And so I turn to Cheryl and go, wow, you know, like I spent, you know, that, that's how I spent my night. Wasn't that great? You know, I, I wasted a night. I preached a sermon on sleep and then did this. Um, and she just turns and laughs at me and says, I planned Lydia's graduation party last night. <laughs> five years from now, you know, she's got a wedding in five days and, you know, planning something five years. What is it? What, what is it going on with our brain? Do you know what I think? That distractions give birth to distractions. Like they have little babies. And they have grandchildren and grandchildren and grandchildren. And, and literally, here's the problem. If you don't seek God, like focus in on one thing, then you become, um, you become distracted by distractions. And those little distractions aren't going to be good enough. They're going to be more distractions and more distractions and more distractions to the point where you literally have this choice. It's either seeking God or going nuts. It's either seeking God or becoming a person that worries about things and stews about things that probably will never, ever happen in your life. And you can spend hours building decks that you'll never build. Um, you think about that? I turned to her and said, well, at least our marriage is great. And she says, we still got six days. <laughs> still got a week. May not be by the end of the week. You know? I, love, I love humor. I love humor in that. Um, what about you? Like, where, where are you at right now? You, you may, like, welcome. Thank, you just gave me stress, Fred, just looking into your life. Um, but the, literally the choice of our life is this. We either seek God and cast our cares upon Him or our worries will overwhelm us. They will get us. And it's not just survival mentality doing this. Can I remind you of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6? Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Like there is, there's benefit, there's, it just changes your life when you say, God, my focus is gonna be on you. Now what's next? Uh, the reason why I wanted to use the backpack is when you take the stuff out, when you take, take everything out, just imagine giving it to God. And then say, God, what do you want me to do with this? Like, I give this to you, you take care of it, but is there something? If you could write down a to-do list, man, if you can just write down a prayer list. Like, I remember giving that to you, God. Now you tell me what to do. And um, that, that could create the absolute best possible things for us to focus on.